Hi everyone, welcome to ADU TV. I hope you're all doing well. I am doing super well. I'm a bit excited and a bit um, sad at the same time. Um, today is my launching, um, yeah, for adult dyslexic United. But the sad thing is, today, all day, it's been raining. Raining. Today, it's been a really bad day. It's been raining non-stop since we got up. And it's not just raining. And on top of it, there's been a troop strike. <laughs> but, you know, guys, um, um, do you know what? Everything happens for a reason. I'm a kind of person, I take everything as meant to be. There's a lesson to learn. I'm a Christian and I believe in God and I know the plan he's got for me, it's great. So I'm just going to go ahead. Whatever happened is God's plan. Uh, it's a bit of a letdown, but you know, when you've got your faith with you and I've come so far to, you know, to organize this event, to be where I am right now. So there's no need for me to stress. There's no need for me to be sad. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing today. So I'm so super excited people turn up or not it's actually understandable because the weather it's pretty bad on top of it all uh there's been a troop strike so it's really really hard for people to get to me and um that's it guys i'm gonna take you to the hall i've got my i've got my beats and bobs but you know what sarah sarah you know life continues thank you all for coming uh, I am Sandra, the CEO or the founder of Abbott Dyslexic United. So I'm delighted guys to have you today and um, I am dyslexic myself. The journey of living with dyslexia has been absolutely painful. Absolutely painful, I don't know where to start. But um, I've decided to make a change. I decided to make a change. You know, the, the, the very soft note on the piano. Do you, do you, should we get rid of that then? Should we just say we don't need it? Because it's only a little note. Only makes a little sound. Mm -hmm. Then you write out nearly every piano concerto ever written, mm -hmm. because no, it's vital. You're if you're dyslexic, you're on the key. You're on the, yeah. the you know you're you're one of the keys. And it depends where you are. You, you know you, you can be very high up or you can be very low down. But you will, and you never lose it. You're not going to ever train a child to suddenly not be dyslexic. That mm. that whole idea of teaching you and that you will be cured, which is one of the things that I have had experienced, is, is, is an anathema. It will never happen. It's, and it shouldn't happen. It's not what it's about. No, yeah. finding strategies to support you yeah. and to make it slightly more accessible mm. in life. Yeah. Mm. But, but the interesting point you're saying there as well is that it's not just a, oh, I'm bad at spelling. Mm -hmm. It's It's... Actually, I might be quite good at spelling. Yes. But actually, what I find really hard is taking all that information you told me and being able to respond to it really quickly mm -hmm. and come back to you. So you said a couple of things earlier on, and I brought yeah. something, and I couldn't necessarily give you an answer straight away mm -hmm. because the conversation had moved on. And by the time it had moved on, I was listening to that. But that was really interesting. What was it I wanted to say again? Yeah. It's gone. Mm -hmm. So that can be an aspect of it. Or memory. Memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how I, I, you, you know, it's like going into Moles and Spencer's. You went in there today. Mm -hmm. You might have gone there wanting two or three things. You suddenly wander around and you see some, you know, Percy pigs mm. and a few, you know, yum yums, and then you start sort of blending a few more things in your arms. And as you're walking around, suddenly you haven't got two or three things, you've got five or six things, mm -hmm. and then things are falling out. Somebody else, you should have got the trolley, shouldn't you? Yeah. That, that's your memory. Mm -hmm. it's, only, it's a small scratch board, isn't it? So yeah. kind of like you put too many things in your arms, eventually mm -hmm. things begin to fall out. You can't, you can't hold on yeah, to Yeah, but it. then the other part of this memory is that suddenly the following day, you can remember it all. Mm. Oh, yeah. And it, once you've it, got it, it into the long term yeah. memory, yes. it's there. Yeah. But mm. it's getting it from that short term memory yeah. into the long term memory. You need strategies and support mm. to, to help yes. chunk together information or link it to things that are really memorable to you as an individual to make it so much more accessible. I have a, a trick which is sandpaper. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, which, yeah. Uh, we're, we're, it's not hard sandpaper. No. You know, it's not like that soft one you yeah. buff your nails with. Yeah. You put a little piece in your pocket, and then when someone says to you, 4.30, you just drop some with your finger in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you will not forget it. The, the thing... The kind of thing you write in yeah, there. And you write yeah. in the, yeah. the thing for us is it's got to be multi-sensory. Mm -hmm. So it's really great if you're told something, but then it's reinforced by... I mean, uh, uh, making a word in clay, even, you know, or plasticine, or just so that you have something else that can put that 
image that mm. thing into exactly. your head mm. and and the sort of I, I become so maybe going off this but I am yeah. really fascinated by yeah. sign language mm. because I think dyslexic children and maybe autistic children would benefit from learning uh, a sign mm. because in a way we could half our problems is with words I, I say things wrong the wrong way I mm. get things into a terrible muddle <laughs> and I wonder if you could sign whether that would enhance your ability to actually get your words into order. Mm, mm, mm. I, I, it's something I hadn't thought about before because words, if you think of just how we communicate, words are so, they're not everything. Mm. I mean, I'm here with you, I'm watching your body, you know, how you react and how you talk. Mm -hmm. That tells me more than what they were, are it's saying. Mm. And in a way, I feel that for us as dyslexic people who are incredibly visual, it would add another layer mm. that m would help us in exact. You're just bad at school, you're mm. lazy. Is It comes out in hip hop, rap. Uh, there is a different beat. So I, I, I feel there are different ways for dyslexia, dyslexic people to find their language. Mm -hmm. And I think in the music world, that has helped a great, great deal mm -hmm. um, to, to, you know, to, and I think the other thing that helped is Steve McQueen's amazing film oh. about his experience of being dyslexic. And I must have made a lot of, hopefully, hopefully, made a lot of parents look at their children and think again. I mean, I've been to schools where I've seen, I went to a military school, which uh, has to remain nameless, but, and I was told that, oh, you know, oh, he's stupid. He, he, he isn't clever at all. Mm -hmm. but he and he wasn't. He asked the best question I ever got asked, and he wasn't stupid. And the thing is, this, this categorizing, particularly of boys, is terrifying. This, you know, you are not clever you're not going to achieve anything. Mm -hmm. And and so a lot of naughtiness happens and the naughtiness leads to young <laughs> offenders' prisons. Yeah. So in this country, we have two enormous institutions that have the most dyslexic people in them. One is Her Majesty's prisons for young offenders. The second is art schools. Mm -hmm. We have the highest population mm -hmm. of dyslexic art students. Now, what does that tell us? Mm -hmm. And why are we letting that happen? Those young men shouldn't be in there. They just grew naughty out of boredom. Mm -hmm. And that is a very, very dangerous. Also, the thing that I find very interesting when I go into schools, I, I could never take anything in if I wasn't fidgeting. If yes. I wasn't doing something with my hands or drawing a picture mm -hmm. or you see boys doing this all the time. And the, um, the teacher goes, be quiet, put your foot, what are you doing? Stop doodling, listen. And the minute they can't doodle, and the minute they can't tap, and the minute they can't do something like that, nothing goes in the brain. Mm -hmm. It's like water off a duck's back. And I've done quite a lot yeah. of experiments mm -hmm. with children, giving them those um, squishy things. Mm -hmm. Talk me that. And you get a child to read without a squishy thing, and it'll be very stumbling. Give them a squishy thing and you'll find that it goes, exactly. um, goes in. Mm -hmm. yeah. But none of these things, it's, it's very rare to meet a teacher who specializes in this. Most teachers in our country are given three weeks to understand dyslexia. Well, it, it, and if that. Then it's probably about half a day out of a, yeah. a teacher training course yeah. in... in and, and there's a petition actually at the moment on for government for all, you know, all teachers to have mandatory SEND training now. But whether that will ever get through enough, you know, at least ten thousand signatures in it to have it, even have a discussion on 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 Parliament for it. But but the the provision for teachers is pretty limited. So you know they may dyslexia, but they might not necessarily be that aware of dyspraxia or oh, dyscalculia. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, completely as well, under the radar. And um, the other thing about this, which is quite interesting with your son and everything, is as someone described it really interestingly to me. There's one area in the world where there is the most autistic, the most dyslexic, the most dyspraxic billion millionaires in the world who most probably control everything you've got on your phone. And that is Microsoft, mm -hmm. Google, mm -hmm. Apple, all dyslexic. And they are in Silicon Valley. 
And what they've discovered is that their children, funny, are also mm -hmm. dyslexic, autistic, dyspraxic. But so someone described it really well because a lot of research is beginning to be done into this, which is, this is a river. So it, it depends where you are in the river. You can't be a little bit in the river. You're all in the water, mm -hmm. but you may be just at the edge, but you may have flowed in with a little autism. There may be a bit of HD. It, nothing is as pure as just no. the statement that you are dyslexic, yeah. you are dyslexic, you are this, you are that. These labels need to be looked at in, again in a much more imaginative way. I've never known anyone who's dyslexic not to be one or a bit of the other. Mm. Yes, a lot of the traits will yeah. be yeah. yeah, and some, I mean, for instance, I can concentrate for all day. I mean, literally, a people can fall down dead around me and I, I don't even wake up. That's our son, <laughs> he's autistic, right? It's just, and it's that level of concentration. I remember <laughs> once I was writing in the kitchen and I was writing away and um, I was really busy just, and my daughter came in and she went, mum, and I, mm. uh, yeah, what, what? She said, there's five people in the kitchen and we've just all cooked breakfast. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, huh? I hadn't even noticed them there. I just was so autism. locked into what I'm yes. doing. So there is in me an autistic yeah. strand. And what I'm trying to say is that none of this is, and, until we really understand how the river bends mm -hmm. and flows, we're not going to help anyone. By just saying we are one, you are the other, this no. is that, we are not helping. No, and I suppose this sector is often the, the one where it's now much more known about and yeah. you're much more aware and people go, oh, my child. Speaking about dyslexia, and they said, oh, I, I'm only a little bit dyslexic. <laughs> and, and that word is like, my God, is that the same person just went to bed? And I will use the most massive words and everything is, you know, intact. But as the day drags along, and I've realised words have started to get, you know, muddled. Yeah. And, you know, my reading is like, so how is it with you, especially your writer? Well, it, and it's really, because I am a writer, I suppose you good with words, I get, I sort of paralyse myself because I know I'm going to say it ran the wrong way. And and if I, if you say something and you sound really stupid and you've got it wrong, mm -hmm. you'll go, yeah, oh, she thinks she's so clever. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you really, you, so I do get into a, a, a big bubble, <laughs> and um, I have some days where I'm really good, I'm thinking, oh look, I'm just cooking on gas here, I'm really rollicking, and then there are other times where I think, I don't even know where P is in this alphabet, I've worked on it, I don't even know where, I can't even find it, and I think that, you know, so some days I'm really bad. Uh, I, the gift, my gift of dyslexia is a storytelling brain. I can tell a story on a sixpence. And I never thought I would ever be able to write it down. That was my biggest fear, that I would just not be able to do it. And then I suddenly one day was sitting and I got one of these, they looked like Barbie Lucy, they were sort of blue clams, they were called. And I started writing on my laptop and I suddenly thought, God, this is so good. There's a radio on telling me the story. And I am writing away, I'm writing away, and I go make a cup of tea, and I come back and sit down and think, hell, where's the channel that I was listening to? And I realise it's not, it's in you. I could do it. And it, I, I cannot tell you, it was like flying. That was my superpower. Thank you. My superpower or my dyslexic gift, I'm very creative. Uh, I see the world completely differently out the boxes. Uh, example, in a room, blind completely. What other people could not see, I could see. I'm very creative and I love it. And that's the thing about, I wouldn't change my dyslexic brain because the gift that I have, I don't want anybody else to take it away from me. So very creative and I see the world completely differently. <laughs>